Hi, I'm Charlie Duncan. I've been taking photos every day for over 10 years now. And it's time I teach you how to take some better photos. Today, I'm down here at the South Fork of the Sock River, and I wanna teach you guys how to get those, those silky smooth water shots. So let's go over to the camera and uh, hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> Cause there's a lot of water flowing. I think I just felt a raindrop, so we better hurry on this one. Okay. So what you wanna do is you wanna find some flowing water, whether it be a roadside stream, a waterfall, or a river or a creek. Any of those will do. Anywhere where you have the white flowing water. It won't work as well here where the water's not flowing as much, That's not going to show anything really silky smooth or cool. Uh, what we can do there is if you take a long enough shutter speed shot, you can make that look glassy and like smooth. It'll take some of the ripples away and, and you might get some of the reflections of the trees. But today we're doing flowing water shots, not still water shots. We can do that in another video. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to get your camera and your tripod out. You're gonna to wanna to take your camera and you're gonna to wanna to either put it in manual mode or TV or, or... TV is a Canon thing. I think it's S on uh, Nikon. I, I'll put what it is on a Sony right here. Panasonic, Pentax guys, all the other camera manufacturers. Just look for your shutter priority mode. Um, and I'm sorry you guys are always left in the dust. I mean no disrespect. A camera's a camera. You can get great shots with a cell phone. You can get great shots with a Canon. You can get great shots with a Nikon, a Sony, all that stuff. It's just a camera. As long as you know how to use it, you're gonna get great shots. Okay, so shutter priority mode or manual mode. We'll go over shutter priority mode first. Shutter priority mode. You want to take your uh, your shot and line it up, and then you're going to want to try maybe uh, half a second, which looks like uh, this zero um, quote five is half a second. Try setting your ISO at the lowest, and if your uh, your number starts to flash, then you know you need to boost your ISO a little bit more. Your 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 f stop starts to flash. Because uh, when it's flashing, it means your camera can't compensate for uh, for the, the half a second. So you need to compensate a little more with your ISO and boost that up a little bit. Uh, I, will, uh, I will have videos on aperture, ISO, and shutter speed uh, coming soon. Uh, I'll do a whole course on that thing for you guys. But anyway, so line up your shot. You are going to want a little bit of of uh, clear water and a little bit of white water in your shot. You see how the water's flowing over those rocks right there. You can kind of see through it. And then you got the white parts over here. That's good. But if you're, uh, if you're looking right here, you got a lot of white there. It still can look good as long as you have some rocks pointed out, poking out of it. But you're gonna want a little bit of clear water and a little bit of white water together. So I'm going to aim for that spot over there. I'm going to focus and then I'm going to shoot. And uh, to me, that looks like it's got way too much white in it. I'm uh, not really liking that photo. So let's, low, let's fast, speed up our shutter to a quarter of a second. looking that great and the reason for that is is you got too much water and not enough stillness in your shot so let's move it over to this rock over here and have the rock in your shot like so now when you take the shot you have something to show that it's still standing still while the water is moving 
but as you see, there's too much white in that shot. So we're gonna need to find another spot to take this shot because it's too, there's too much water flow here. So let's find another spot real quick. Okay, I didn't have to move far. The spot I was just shooting is right here. And I just turned to uh, aim up this way. Now, as you can see in my shot here, I have part of this large rock in the front corner of the shot. That's gonna do two things. That's gonna give me an extra layer, which we talked about in my other video right here, landscape photography tips. And uh, so it's gonna give more depth to the shot. And it's also gonna give me something that's perfectly still in my shot. So we'll try with the quarter second that we left it on and we'll see how that looks. Okay, that's looking pretty good. But if you saw on my screen here, you see that black stuff flashing? That's my highlight warning. That means there's no data in that spot. Now that can be okay. If you don't care that there's any data in that spot, which there's nothing really spectacular in that spot, then it's fine to have some highlights that are, are clipping. That's what, that's what the technical term is, clipping highlights. But I kind of like that shot. So to get rid of your clipping highlights, what you do is you adjust your exposure compensation. Now, different cameras are gonna have different ways to do this. So you're gonna need to look this up in your manual. But on my camera, I just move the opposite wheel. You kinda have to hit a half shutters press and move the opposite wheel, this wheel, so that you see this, this little dial down here. I'll put one up here and show you what it looks like. So this dial right here on your camera with the negative three, the two, the one, and then the little like carrot looking thing. I don't know. And then the one, the two, and the plus three. So if you move that little dot that's under that line, this little dot right here, uh, you will uh, adjust your exposure compensation. Now, the one, the two, and the three, and the negative one, the negative two, and the negative three. What those are, are stops of light. So a stop of light is a half the amount of light that, uh, that you have in your shot. So according to your camera, when you're right in the middle, that is a perfect exposure to your camera. But all shots are different. So if you had it in auto mode, that little dot in the middle, that would be what you took the picture with. So anytime you take an auto mode, that little dot at the bottom is in the middle. What I like to do is I like to move that dot back two little spaces right before the one. So right there. And I found that, that that's a good uh, happy medium for the shot. So I'm gonna try the, taking the shot again with those, those settings, with just the exposure compensation changed. Now, as you see, there's no blown out highlights. There's no flashies. No flashes is good. So that means you're not missing any data in the highlights in that spot. So I think that's a pretty good image. So the reason your water looks super silky like that is because your shutter's open and the water is still moving while your shutter's open for a quarter of a second. All that motion while your shutter's open is being captured by your camera. Now, in lower light situations, and let me step away from the water so I don't have to yell at you guys. Okay. So in lower light situations, your, your camera or your phone are gonna wanna keep that shutter open longer. So when you're in auto mode, 
and the, it's kind of dim out. Uh, that's why you're getting blurry pictures is because your shutter's open longer to capture the light to make that that perfect image, that dead center image uh, on your exposure compensation dial. And uh, that's why your shots are ending up blurry like that. We're out camping, we brought our own blue skies. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's why you're getting these silky smooth waterfall shots. Here's a couple examples. All that motion was caught while the shutter was open. Uh, so I said to start at about a half a second. I'm gonna change that now. Let's start at about a quarter second on uh, shutter priority mode. If you're in manual mode, you need to set that, uh, your shutter speed at a quarter second, and then you're gonna have to adjust your aperture accordingly, which is why shutter mode is probably the best way to do this. It's, it's easy, it's pretty automatic, it does it for you. So that's it. That's how you take flowing water shots. Go to shutter priority mode, adjust your shutter to a quarter second. Make sure you have something still in your shot, like a rock. Make sure you have a little bit of white water. From there, it's pretty simple. Hit the shutter. If you want your water to flow more, increase your shutter speed. Make your shutter speed longer. Go up to that half a second, and then you'll get more flowy water. If you want your water to be less flowy, make your shutter quicker uh go to like a an eighth of a second a sixteenth of a second play around with it and see what kind of shots you can get with changing your different shutter speed it's not going to be the same for every waterfall some waterfalls that are super powerful you need a quicker shutter speed some that some uh creeks that have a lower flow you're going to need a longer shutter speed to get that that flowy effect a lot of people don't like that flowy effect I don't know why that people don't like it. I think it's beautiful. But you know what? Art is subjective. Everybody has their own view on what, what is beautiful and what is not. So just because somebody doesn't like something that you do, doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. You see, I, I see another shot. It's really beautiful of, the, uh, of some flowers with the water behind it. If I remember, I'll put that shot right here. Uh, sorry, squirrel, I get distracted quite a bit, by the way. I see the world in photographs, so I'm constantly just, you know, looking for that next image. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that like, that subscribe, and ring that bell so you can see the next video that's coming up when I drop it. And uh, I'll see you in a week with another video. Thanks. Bye.